Premiere Pro version 4 audio device setup tutorial. I'm DJ Spiegelspin and I'm going to show you all about it. Premiere Pro released version 4 and in this update we have a whole new menu in the settings where we could adjust the audio device setup. So if you press the middle button, go to your settings, you're going to see all of these new settings and you press audio device setup and you have this whole menu. So if you have no controller plugged in, you could still change the outputs and the channels and plug a microphone in. And also when you plug a controller in, now you could have a booth output and headphones and a microphone. So in this video, I'm going to show you with the controller plugged in and with the controller not plugged in. So first we're starting with no controller. So if you look over here at the main output, it picked up my Bluetooth speaker, which is the JBL Pulse 3. Now this, whatever you're going to be playing on DJ Pro is going to be going to the output that you selected. So all my DJing is going to come out of this speaker. But now we could have more inputs since that Bluetooth isn't using any of our ports. So we could take a microphone and if we have the correct USB, USB-C adapter, we could plug the microphone into this USB-C adapter and then plug this into the iPad and we could be doing karaoke and we could be using the mic when we DJ while the controller, while the iPad is playing the music out of a Bluetooth speaker. So I'm going to show you what it looks like when I plug the microphone in. You can see at the bottom it switched from iPad microphone to the USB microphone that I just plugged in. Plan on DJing and using a Bluetooth speaker and then plugging a USB microphone into the iPad for karaoke or other microphone purposes. Just make sure you test it out before because with my microphone and this speaker in my house, there was a lot of echo and it didn't sound that great. So test it out with your equipment before you do it at a live gig. So next we're going to plug in our controller. So I'm using one of these. This is a USB-C adapter. It has three USB ports and an HDMI port for video mixing. If you're getting a new one, I definitely recommend having at least three of these USB imports because now we could plug in a USB mic to the iPad. So we're going to plug this in like this. And watch what happens to the screen when we plug in the controller. The whole user interface changes. Some people like it. Some people have commented telling me they don't like it. Personally, I wish they just left it the way it was because I was used to using it that way. But I guess we'll get used to it. So now we're going to go over here to our settings. And then we're going to see audio device setup. So the first option is to output to the speakers, to the iPad speakers. So instead of having your controller hooked up to a big sound system or other external speakers, you could just have your controller plugged in and mess around, get your tracks ready and listen to it out of the iPad speakers. I do this a lot when I'm preparing tracks or practicing scratching. If you're in a quiet room, it's loud enough for personal use. And that's an option you have. Next is mixer mode. You can either do internal or external. Internal uses the iPad's mixer. External is for using external mixer hardware. So now we go down to the good part, the main output. So channel one and two is going to be our main output. So if you look on the controller where it says main right here, this is going to be what it's what the one and two represents. So I will explain that in a second. And then pre cubing is three and four. So what that means is where we have our headphone, that is the channel three and four. So why is that important? Because we could switch it up, we can change how it is. And we can do new stuff, different stuff than we were able to do before. So over here for pre cubing, you could select split output. That's if you have a splitter for the iPad and then you could put the headphones and the output 
in separately. I don't recommend doing that because the adapters sometimes come undone and you might lose the music and then do a tomato. So, but if you put it on none, here is where it gets interesting. So now we have the main output is coming out of the output, pre-queuing is none, and now that we freed up that channel three and four, we could use that as our booth input. So three and four is our booth output. So instead of using this headphones output for headphones, we're going to be using it for a booth output. And now what is a booth output? A booth output is a speaker pointed directly at the DJ so they could hear all the beats and all the precise stuff happening in the music because sometimes when you're doing DJ gigs, the speakers are facing towards the audience and then you don't get to hear what's going on and the way it should be and it can mess up your mixing. So a lot of professional DJs use a, a booth output. So now we could do that. If you don't feel like using headphones with this controller, you could have a booth output. Also, you could use this for another room. Let's say you're DJing and there's two rooms and you wanna have music in both rooms, maybe upstairs and downstairs or in where, where they're eating and then the dance floor. You could use the booth output as just a simple other output. So now you have two different sets of speakers playing your music and you have that option now. This was an option that we didn't have before and different controllers are gonna have more channels. So if you have a four band controller with for decks, then you could use a different output for the booth, and some controllers have a specific booth output on the controller itself. So you would, so you could use this in that way. Now the next thing is the microphone. This is really cool because some, a lot of the controllers that I like don't have a microphone input. So this is the DJ to go to touch. There'll be a link down below if you want to grab one. It's a great controller, but it's limited by the amount of stuff you could do. So there is no spot for a microphone. So when I made my karaoke, how to do karaoke video and how to use the microphone with DJ Pro before the update, I taught you guys how to do workarounds and other ways to get the microphone into the DJ program, even though it didn't allow us, but now it allows us to do that. So we could have the controller plugged in, the main output coming out of the main output, and then we could take the microphone, and then we could use a microphone on the iPad. So using our adapter, we could use one of these ports and plug in a microphone, and then we could have it set to be our microphone. So test this out yourself before you do it live, because a lot of people have been commenting saying with the new update, there's some bugs and glitches that they will fix shortly, but I've had the app crash a couple times when I plugged in the microphone. But it does work and it is really cool that they gave us this option. So just remember, you can't have two things in the same channel. So if I wanted to put switch the pre-queuing to over here, apply, and now we could do pre-queuing that way or if you want to switch around the booth so just don't get caught up in that this is the main output that's pre-queuing that's booth and that's microphone you guys can change what these do so it, it'll start with channels one and two as the main output but then you guys could switch it and it gives you more control it lets you think out of the box more and do more stuff when we're DJing and I think that this is something that needed to be added and I'm really happy that they added this feature because I believe as DJs, we should have the most control of the softwares that we're using. And this takes it a whole step above. I'm really curious to see if they're going to add effects, maybe add some echo effects or some filters into the microphone input so that when we're talking the microphone, we can have effects like some, uh, some of the expensive mixers have. You plug the microphone into the mixer and then you have some effects in your microphone channel. So I'm waiting to see if they add any of that and I think that'll be really exciting. So if you guys wanna learn more about the update 
If you guys want to let me know if you like the update or you don't, let me know in the comments, and I will be making videos every day to keep you guys on top of what's going on in the world of DJing with the iPad.